What's up YouTube? Just wanted to make another little video for y'all. This one's about the Pro Audio Marty McFly system in my living room. And I just wanted to talk a little bit more in depth about how I have the system set up. Because in the last video I made is kind of an overview. Let's see if this thing will focus. The last video I made is kind of an overview. I was a little bit brief and I just wanted to talk a little bit more about how I have each component hooked up and a little bit more of the technical aspect. For the source, I'm just using this little Dell laptop. It's a couple years old. It has some variety of i5 processor, not sure which one. Uh, 4 gigs of RAM, 500 gigabyte hard drive. Just pretty basic computer from a couple years ago, but works pretty well and it'll actually play 1080p video on YouTube. And the television is just a little 42 or 46 inch, I'm not sure which, sharp LCD TV that was on sale at Best Buy a couple years ago. Here up top we have the Mackie Mix 12 FX mixer which is being fed by my Dell laptop. This is a great mixer, I bought it brand new. The only two complaints I have about it is that the main volume fader seems a little flimsy. I'm always very careful when operating my equipment and cautious, but for something that is a pro audio product, I would like that to be a little sturdier, but at the price point this unit is, it's still an excellent bargain. And the second minor gripe, which I think this applies to a lot of these compact desktop type mixers, is the external power supply. I would have rather it had an integrated power supply, but it's not a deal breaker. It's still a great unit. It doesn't insert any noise itself into the signal that I can discern and works great for the simple use I'm using it for right now. The rack itself is made by Royal Racks. It's a 16 unit high rack. We have a American DJ power strip that everything's plugged into. Next in the rack is the ART 355 dual 31 band equalizer. It's a pretty nice unit. It has some good features that I really like. Show you the controls on it. It has a high pass filter on both channels, a low pass filter on both channels, and a gain control on both channels. It also has a switch to switch between 6 decibels or 12 decibels of boost or cut on the equalization circuit. And it also has a bypass button in case you just want to listen to it flat, bypass whatever set. You don't have to bother moving all the sliders where you want them. You can just take the tone out and get an idea of what it sounds like flat and then turn it back on at whatever you have it set to. And cosmetically this thing's pretty good. It has one little slider broke off over there. Not a deal breaker. It still works. I paid about a third the cost of a new unit for this. I got it off Reverb.com. And I can't show you the back side. It's kind of difficult where it is right now, but the back side of this unit has some excellent options for connecting your equipment. It has quarter inch inputs, XLR inputs, and also has RCA inputs and I believe it has outputs for RCA's too don't quote me on that but I have the unbalanced signal runs into the mixer and I have all balanced cables from there back alright well I wanted to be sure, so I went ahead and pulled the rack out enough that I could peek behind it, and sure enough, the 355 equalizer has input and output for RCA, and it also has input and output for quarter inch and XLR cables. So, pretty handy unit as far as connections go. And while I'm back here, I'll show you how I have everything else connected. I'm feeding 
this first amplifier from the crossover and then I have that link from that amp going to the next amplifier in the rack. The connections for the tower speakers are twist lock speak on connections and for the subwoofer just using the binding post with some 10 gauge oxygen free wire and I'll cut the camera off and go back around to the front. Alright, we're back around the front side of the rack again. And next up in the line, we have the XLS 1500. It's running 525 watts RMS to each channel, left and right. So 1,050 watts total. It's 4 ohms per channel. And then the next in the rack, we have the XLS 1502 which is basically just the newer version of this amplifier on top. Both of them have some pretty nifty features. I'm not going to go through all the menus on it, but both of them have active crossovers. The XLS 1502 actually has a bandpass crossover on each channel built in, and it also has some options as far as uh, flexibility. I think you can run each channel with independent filtering on it, low or high, or bandpass. And also has limiters built in to both of these amplifiers, which I do have engaged. They're defeatable, but I have them turned on just to help keep the equipment safe because I do get a little bit reckless. I know y'all have seen the red lights in some of my videos. So we do like to take it to 11 here, but fortunately everything is built pretty stout and can take some abuse. The towers are PV, PV215s. It's a 1.4 inch compression driver for the horns and two 15 inch mid-range drivers, woofers I guess you'd say. And the, the PV actually calls these a quasi three-way system. I'm not sure exactly how they have the passive crossover set up inside them but I believe the way they have it set up is that the bottom is more a dedicated uh, woofer duty only. I believe the middle woofer still plays the bass frequencies, but I think that the bottom woofer has a high pass on it. So it's operating in almost a subwoofer manner, but I'm not sure and I won't know until one day when I feel like pulling the crossovers out and finding out for sure, but it's not a true dedicated three-way system. The subwoofer is over there in the corner. I played around with the layout a little bit this week and flipped it around. The port's actually firing into the corner over here. And I have to say I like this setup a lot better. Of course being corner loaded it's louder but the base is also quite a bit tighter like this and there's less dead spots as you move through the living room. Before each seat on the couch there's a huge discrepancy on how loud the bass sounded and it's still loud in this first seat over here on the love seat. Still a little bit louder being over there than on the actual couch but it's quite a bit more even through the room and just sounds a lot better the way I have it set up right now. The box is a A-trend enclosure. It's actually made for this subwoofer but it's meant to be used in an automobile. It's a car audio subwoofer. But I got this thing on sale a while back, the enclosure, and it works pretty good. I do wish it was tuned lower but still I just had this subwoofer and box laying around pretty much. so. Overall the performance is pretty nice, the sound is pretty good, and I'm pretty happy with it. And that's about all there is to the system. I've already cranked it up a little bit, so here at the end of the video I'll have some clips of it blasting for you, but they always say if it sounds good to you and makes you happy, it's a good system, and this one is to me.